terrorists have highlighted for many years uh, the loopholes in our border security. Uh, what we do know is there are criminals as part of this flow. We do know there are gang members as part of this flow, that they have examples of kids being kidnapped uh, by criminals in the flow. Uh, so it's not all people seeking asylum. That was Department of Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen warning of who may be in the caravan and in other groups as they march toward the border. Joining me now for reaction to everything that we've been talking about tonight, an exclusive interview with the secretary that we did this afternoon is Geraldo Rivera, correspondent at large. Geraldo, good to see you this evening. Um, you know, we talked so much about the danger that is presented to families and individuals who make this trek. And I'm wondering, you know, when you sort of hear all of this, and I know that you spent time studying this for years, so you know these things, but it, it, it raises the question, is a wall something that makes sense, and might it actually make getting here legally safer for people who are coming from the South? Yes, and I've come reluctantly to agree with the president that he has earned the wall, that the election has consequences and the wall should be built. But may I first, Martha, commend you for a show that is fair, factual, and not uh, reduced to fear-mongering. It was an, a sober analysis of what is a, a damn difficult situation, a humanitarian crisis uh, compared to the need for law and order and, and normalization of life along the border. You really did, I think, a great job. And I think I commend also Secretary Nielsen. I see now why General John Kelly uh, advocated so strongly for her to replace him when he left the Homeland Security Secretary job and went on to become the White House Chief of Staff. She was reasonable. She was competent. Uh, she was uh, uh, contemplative. I thought that she also did a good job. But I also think that what the well, program revealed yeah, is— I, I, I just you saw with your own eyes again who these people are. I, they're not gang bangers. I mean, the vast majority of them, those women, those little children. It is a pathetic situation. It is not. It should not be an alarming situation, Martha. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think that's absolutely true in terms of of you know the challenges that those individuals face. And I think that they are so taken advantage of by these smugglers who basically want to take their money and then dump them over the wall behind me at great danger uh, to themselves. You know, but one of the big challenges here that Democrats and Republicans have to face together, and I, you know, asked her if she thought that if, if the House becomes Democrat majority, uh, if there's any hope of her achieving her goals for, you know, her party and the, the White House that she represents. And she just just said, I think it's incumbent upon anybody who's an elected official to understand the challenges that exist here. But, you know, why would anybody have any confidence, Geraldo, that in this political environment, these two sides can ever come together on a solution that ought to be pretty simple for a United States of America to get their arms around down here? I absolutely agree with you. I have zero confidence. There is no way in God's green earth that anything is going to be done until well after the midterm elections yeah. are settled. It is in both parties' interest vested interest, it is sad to say perversely, to continue this open wound, to not try to deal. For instance, you cut off aid to Central America, you create even worse conditions there than you have now, uh, cut off the $500 million in aid to the region. What do you think that's going to do to people? It's going to make them hungrier? It's going to make them more desperate? They look at the United States, they hear... But, but Geraldo, on the other hand, on the other hand, you know, we look at the, the aid, that's U.S. taxpayer dollars that are being sent south of the border, $500 million a year, and people look at that and they say, why should we do that when these governments don't take any responsibility with that money? There's so much corruption in those countries. They force their own people to try to find a better life in our country. That's a math equation that is not working for us. I, I absolutely agree with you. Maybe the idea is to not cut the aid but to redirect it so it goes more directly to improve the economic uh, situation, the plight of these poor people. They just want to work. We have fruits and vegetables dying on the vine. We have 7 million unfilled jobs in this country. We have the lowest unemployment among African American and Latino Americans ever. I mean, it, there should be a way to work out where we get temporary help, temporary help to fill these, these jobs. All right. We will see. Geraldo, thanks as always for Thank joining us all. tonight. Good to see you. So that is our story tonight from Yuma, 